Hey kids, Dr. Doodle here for the first of what I hope will be a series of more than one videos about programming for all you fledgling young programmers out there. More fledgling old programmers. Anyway, so I got this script here. See, there's the script. But you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking for this video, this script is scrapped. We're going to wing it. So here's the deal. Got your computer that's right about there. Yeah, it's cute. Better zoom in here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom in, damn you. You will zoom in. There it is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write our very first QBasic program. Woohoo! But you know what? It's not going to be the boring old hello world like everybody else. Here's what we're doing. We got, let me adjust the camera so it's right up in your face and in my way. Here's QBasic. Got it running. As you can see, maybe you can zoom up. Uh, maybe I can zoom on. I don't know. This is not working for me. Okay. Well, that's QBasic up and running, and there's our screen. So we got 10 lines of code we're going to type, and it has to be typed exactly as I show you. Otherwise, it'll be wrong. No, it just won't work properly. Important here is just to show you that you can do simple stuff, uh, actually pretty powerful stuff, pretty simply. And you don't need years of experience, but, well, just sit back and you'll see what I mean. Now, first thing, fire up QBasic, get it rolling on your computer, and repeat after me. First line is going to be screen 12. Now, that sets the computer, the QBasic, into uh, graphics mode so you can draw graphics and such. Now, we're going to set some variables. We'll start with X1 and make that 100. Uh, Y1 will be 100. No, not asterisk there. 100. Now, H1 equals 1 and V1 equals 1. Now we do do type do do. That's part of the first part of a loop we'll be doing called the do loop. <laughs> Obviously enough. So now we need a couple of statements. So if uh, x1 is less than 1 or x1 is greater than 640, that's the maximum resolution of the screen, then we we change h1. So h1 equals h1 times negative 1. Boom. Now, if y1 is less than 1 or y1 is greater than 480, then v1 equals v1. Nope. Ah, come on now. It's hard to type with this computer in front, or the camera in front of me. So v1 equals v1 times negative 1. Then x1 equals x1 plus h1. And V1, I'm sorry, Y1 equals Y1 plus V1. P set, that's P S E T, now parentheses there, X1, comma, Y1, parentheses, 14, and loop until in key, that's pound sign, or dollar sign there. Oh, sorry, not until, my mistake, loop while in key equals, boom, quotation mark, and system is our finally, final line, and it's the program, one, two, three. So this should run here now. Well, when I run this, you won't see anything spectacular, we'll just see, start. Uh, here we go, if it's showing, yep, there we go. See this line bouncing around the screen. Well, it's actually not particularly interesting, but it can be useful, and you'll see why. Now, if I can zoom out of here, there we go. What's happening is, let me just uh, restart this here. Boom. There we go. Now, you see, notice what's happening is the dot is moving very slowly across the screen. That's because I slowed down DOSBox just for the purpose of this demonstration. Normally, we're running much faster. But as it goes through the loop, it keeps changing the X and Y coordinates of this point. And then the PSET command paints that on the screen, 
and you see it bouncing around. And that doesn't look very interesting now, but if you imagine maybe you're writing a game, a uh, pong for example, you want a ball bouncing around a screen. This is one technique you could do, use to do that. Instead of pointing, drawing a little spot on the screen, you would draw an image of a ball. Bless you. Bless you, my beautiful young bride there. Got the sneezies. Anyway, so that's going like that, and on, in and of itself, it doesn't look particularly interesting, but we'll end this here. All right, now we've got our first program written. written. Let's see what happens. And remember that I have slowed DOSBox down considerably, way down, just to, so you can see what's happening. In real life, it would run a lot more quickly than this does. But again, this is just for demonstration. Now, if you notice, DOSBox does its nonsense, whatever it's doing in the background, and shortly our program begins. You should see, yep, there's our line starting there. It's actually a, a series of pixels. What's happening is QBasic calculates a position on the screen, X, Y, and it turns the pixel yellow. That's the PSET there, PSET yellow. Now, if notice it's coming down toward the bottom. When it hits the bottom, that will cause it to change the V variable from 1 to negative 1. So now instead of adding 1, we're adding negative 1 or subtracting, making go back up. Same here on this end. There it just turned H variable, no, the horizontal direction, from 1 to negative 1. And now we're subtracting 1, moving it back to the left. When it hits the top, it'll change the V variable, which is the V direct, uh, vertical direction, from one, negative 1 to right there changed to one now we're adding a positive one and it's moving down and I'm sure you can guess when we reach this end it will change the H variable from negative one to positive one right right there when it hit that that variable that boundary excuse me it changed the the variable so it's now adding a positive one and it just keeps bouncing around the screen like this this in and of itself is not particularly interesting, of course, uh, but it's a powerful technique because suppose you're writing a Pong game or Breakout, something like that. You could have the ball bounce around the screen, or you could even, instead of just putting a little pixel, you could draw an image there of a, an alien monster, whatever, you have some enemy attacking you, and he's bouncing around the screen trying to get you. You could have multiple aliens or monsters bounce around the screen at the same time. And we'll show you in a moment how this happens. So hit the key to stop the program DOS box doing its nonsense and here we go let's see what every line does here we'll zoom in just to here if I can oh, good. a little easier to read now as I mentioned earlier DOS I'm sorry QBasic starts in text mode only can't draw any graphics if you want to draw a graphic, you have to tell it, okay, we're going into a particular screen mode. There's screen 1 through 13, possibly 14, it depends on the hardware that you have. Uh, but screen 12 sets that into a screen mode that is graphics. It is 640 pixels wide by 480 pixels high. And it can, uh, can display up to 16 colors at a time. Now, uh, doing that sets that into to graphics mode so we can display some graphics. Next we come to these lines here which set up some variables. We have X1 which is the current horizontal position of our image, in this case the pixel. It's 100 meaning it's 100 columns to the, to the right and Y1 is uh, the, the vertical position just like if you've done any Cartesian graphing X and Y. Y1 is 100 rows from the top so it's 100 over, 100 down. That's where the first pixel will be drawn. Now H and V, they represent the horizontal direction and the vertical direction that is traveling. Now how does this all happen? Well, we start at the do statement here, and you notice the loop, this is part of the do loop. It'll just hit, I'll do all this, hit the loop and go back to do, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again, over and over again, hence the, the purpose of a loop. So our first statement here is an if statement. It says if x1 is less than 1 or x1 is greater than 640, that means if it's oh, past this border or past that boundary, then h1 equals h1 times negative 1. In other words, when you multiply anything by negative 1, the number stays the same, 
but the sign changes. So if you've got 1, it becomes negative 1. Multiply it again, it becomes 1. Anytime this line executes, each one changes from 1 to negative 1, 1 to negative 1, back to 1. So back and forth, basically. Now, same thing happens with y, which is the vertical direction. If y is less than 1 or y1 is greater than 480, that's if it's less than 1 or greater than 480, then v1 equals v1 times negative 1. So if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. Now, this is the line that calculates the, the, the next position. x1 equals f1 plus h1. So whatever position is at now, it becomes the same position plus the horizontal direction. If it's here and it's plus h1, then it moves to the right. If h1 is negative, it moves to the left. Same with the vertical. y1 becomes wherever it is now plus the vertical direction. So wherever it is, if it's if V1 is positive, it goes down. If V1 is negative, it goes up because you're either adding or subtracting one from each variable. Next, the PSET uh, statement, that's pixel set. As, it's, as the name implies, it sets a pixel to a specific color. So we got PSET, X1, Y1, that's where it's going to change, and then 14 is the color, in this case, yellow. Now we've got loop while in key, in key equals that. What does this do? Well, the loop, of course, is the end of the loop and sends it back up here, but only while in key. What's this all about? Normally, if you use an input command, if you want to type a name or something like that, you type it in, and the computer takes that, that information when you hit the enter key. In key is immediate, so whatever you type, if you hit a letter, a number, or a space bar, or anything, it'll immediately send that information to QBasic. So what we want this to do is the loop while in key is nothing. Notice these quotation marks. If I bring this up here, that is wrong. We don't want a space there because even a space is a character. What we want to make sure is there's quotation marks with no space between them. Now, if we press anything, even a space bar, that will drop out of the loop, hit the system command, and end. Uh, hopefully that explains pretty pretty succinctly what happens here. But now if you notice, we got x1, y1, h1, v1. Why is there a 1 all there's always there? Well, if you can have an x1, can't you have an x2, x3? Well, of course you can. So we're going to make this a little more interesting. We'll just copy this by selecting with the mouse, edit, copy, and then edit, paste, and, nope, but right. There we go. Edit. Paste again. Now, where we see X1 and Y1, that's the first pixel. Now we're going to do X2, Y2, H2, and V2. Then X3, Y3, H3, and V3. Okay, so there are our variables set up. I don't know if you can still see the screens get kind of lower here, tilt down a bit. But that just creates new variables. Now we need to use them. So we'll copy this, which is the base of the, the body of the program. Edit, copy, edit, paste, and one more time. Edit, paste. So anywhere here we see X1, we'll make that X2 x1, x2, h1 becomes h2, h2, go line by line, yes I know it's boring but you'll see the results in a moment. v2, v2, like the v2 rocket, x2, x2, h2, y2, y2, V2, B set X2, X2, finally, up here, X3, X3, H3, H3, Y3, Y3, V3, V3, X3, 
three, H three, H three, Y three. Hey, back there, Y three, V three. three and y3 now at this point we've got three separate pixels but they're all gonna be the same color same place that's no good they just overwrite each other so I like to make this one let's see go with uh, 12 and 12 yeah 12 on this one and then make this um, I think it's nine Backspace 9. Now it's the P set control. That's the coordinates so the pixel is going to be set, and that refers to color. 14 is yellow. The P set here, 12 is a kind of a light red, not quite pink, but a lighter red. And then 9, I think, is blue, could be in a green. Now we've also got them, they're all in the same place. So we'll take X2, this is the horizontal coordinate. Instead of 100 pixels over, we'll make this 300 pixels over. And X3 will be 500 pixels over. So if we run this, you should see something interesting. Run, start. Yeah, see, we've got three different pixels bouncing around the screen. And yes, I know it's extremely slow. That's because I've, clo I've uh, sh slowed DOS backs down for the purpose of this experiment. Now, what I will do is speed this up using Control 12. That's a DOS box thing. You notice getting faster. And it's starting to look pretty groovy, isn't it? I like that. In any case, uh, there is one more trick I can show you. We'll stop this now. All right, and we're going to pop in one line here. This will be D E F I N T A through Z. Now, this line. Oh, when QBasic starts, uh, it refers to it considers variables to be floating point. This makes all variables integer by default. What the hell am I talking about? Well, when we type one, we see one. QBasic sees one point zero 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 zero. So we think we're moving a one around. It's actually moving all these these unnecessary zeros. Def int makes sure that. Compute QBase that considers the variables to be integers, so you don't have those leading or following zeros. It just makes it shorter, quicker, easier to do. Now, if you notice, I got A through Z. That means any variable starts with A through Z will be an uh, integer by default. That's any variable we're using here. You could also do, for example, def int A through L, and then anything after that would be a uh, single uh, precision, which is floating point again. So you run this now, it should be a whole lot quicker. Boom. There we go. Now as it goes, you'll notice the pattern changes as the, the lines overwrite each other. As they bounce around, they overwrite each other. You can see where red is coming blue, blue is becoming red, and the yellow will be overwritten in a bit here. But the basic point is that these these three pixels or three images overwrite each other as they bounce around the screen. Again, you don't have to just do lines. You could have an image like a little ball bouncing around, or you could create an enemy bouncing around the screen. This is, I've seen a number of screensavers where they might say, hello world, or whatever, and it just bounces around the screen. This is a technique that is used in so many programs, it's just crazy. And if you notice, we're starting to see this cool kind of, I like to call it like a patchwork or a quilt. Sit and watch as the colors change. Now, one other thing about programming is that uh, with QBasic, you can see the actual code that's running, so you can alter it. You can experiment. Let's, for example, change this to uh, instead of nine. Let's make this ten. See what happens. And I encourage, encourage you to try just small changes like that. Save your program before you make any changes. See, now it's red, green, and yellow. And we can uh, come back here. Change that back to 9. 
But remember, when you get a program that's working, save it. We'll save this file, save as first base. Boom. And yes. Now, if we screw something up terribly, we just open this file again, and we're back to where we started. So instead of making X2, or we'll do this. We'll make, instead of H2, instead of 1, we'll make it a negative 1, and we'll see what happens. Again, we'll slow this down. Run, start. Before, all three pixels are going the same direction, but because I've changed H1 to a negative 1, now it's going the opposite direction of the other two. If we change, say, V3 from 1 to negative 1 and run, Come on. Now it's going up instead of down where the other two are going down. And if we speed this back up, you'll see it. The effect is effect effectively the same. But hopefully you can see that small changes will alter how the program performs. They get different patterns out of it. So it's up to you to try this program, make a few changes, see what happens, and, and learn by doing, basically. Uh, hopefully that will have been not too confusing and if you uh, have any questions be sure to leave a comment and say hey dummy what the heck does this do or what am I doing here and I will respond as quickly as possible other than that uh, happy new year to you all today is January 2nd I met, failed to mention happy new year so happy new year so long and happy programming bye